Bloom Seeds. Uh, welcome to our Thursday Live. Uh, let me just make sure I got all my goodies here. Make sure we're ready to chat tonight. Uh, this is our live chat number two here at uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, if you are new uh, to our lives, I'll give you guys a couple minutes, a couple seconds, whatever. Uh, it's five o'clock, so we are here and ready to go. Uh, we go live every Thursday. Um, in the past, we were live on our Facebook page, and now we've decided to venture over to our YouTube channel and uh, hopefully get a bigger audience. I know a lot of people are moving away from different uh, social media, so if you are joining me, please comment below, uh, like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. I'm gonna get situated here so I can see your chats. All right, so if you have any questions, please comment uh, below. Uh, if you've got any questions, comments, please, uh, I do ask that you keep it family friendly. Uh, this is a family friendly show after all. And we've got lots of people learning about growing food. Uh, so if you joined my last week's YouTube video, uh, we discussed kind of just a questions and answers, uh, questions that customers have asked. Hey, Crystal, thanks for joining us. Last week was uh, questions customers had asked and we were answering those questions. Now, if you would like to have your questions answered in our next live video, you can go to our website, which is marysheirloomseeds.com uh, and you can go ahead and uh, use the grow your own food page. And there's an option there that you can add uh, your questions, your comments, your concerns. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and Sorry, I gotta see your comments. I don't see them all. There we go. Getting used to the whole uh, live thing. So hang on just a sec. There we go. Okay, so tonight I have something slightly different. Uh, tonight I wanna talk about uh, plant health uh, and then also give you guys a couple recipes. That was part of our questions from last week. And um, that was uh, pest control. But also what can you use that you already have on hand uh, for pest control. Take a little sip here. Drinking some lemon water, staying healthy and hydrated after working out in the garden. All right, so uh, David, uh, who's a regular here on our live videos, he asked about what can you use, uh, things like cayenne and cinnamon, how do you use that in your garden? All right, so let me get see if I can here we go there we go we've got a new moderator here for our video tonight all right so there's a lot of things that people don't realize that you can use in your own garden to help um, with pest control with uh, boosting the health of your plants um, part of growing a healthy garden is healthy soil. So building your soil now uh, for your future garden is going to be very important. I've uh, got some fun stuff behind me that I wanna mention as well before we get into our major chat. Uh, while we're chatting here, please feel free to comment. Let me know where you are and where you're, um, where you're joining us. If you've got a homestead, what's your homestead name? Uh, I will try to go live here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific, that's 8 p.m. Eastern for those of you on the East Coast. Uh, I am Mary from Mary's Heirloom Seeds. Um, our website is marysheirloomseeds.com if you're looking for awesome seeds. Uh, if you're just joining us, please feel free to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We have a major announcement coming on March 20th. Hey Jane, welcome. Uh, so if you are not signed up to receive our emails, hey, Karen, thanks for joining us. If you haven't signed up to join our emails, you can go to our website, marysheirloomseeds.com at any time, scroll all the way down to the bottom and it says newsletter. You can enter your email address and subscribe. Now, when you do that, we don't sell your information. We don't share your information with anybody. We only send you out valuable information for growing an amazing garden. And that is our goal here at Mary's Heirloom Seeds is to help you grow an awesome garden. All right, 
Now, before we get into the recipes, I mentioned earlier in the video some things that you can use in your own kitchen or in your cabinets uh, for pest control and for plant health. Let's talk about some of the very, very common issues that you might see in your garden. Uh, hey, Stacy, she says, viewing from cold Wyoming. Well, I'm in a tank top. I got a fun little farmer's tan going on. <laughs> Uh, it's a little warm out today, so uh, I will get a chance. I will get a chance to get back out into the garden after this. Uh, maybe shovel out the chicken coop after the video. <laughs> Not so fun stuff. Um, so let's talk about common issues. Uh, now, recently on our Facebook page, I posted a really simple uh, picture, and we have something similar on our website as well. Um, Dawn says, surround my garden in mint to keep the mites away. That is an excellent suggestion. Uh, and I've got some mint here that I'm going to discuss in a little bit. Uh, so the probably the most common issue that people have, let's say with tomatoes, is blossom end rot. Now what happens is, I don't have anything to show you. Uh, one, because we didn't have blossom end rot this year, which was awesome. Uh, but also, it's March, and I don't have tomatoes growing at the moment. They are growing, but not producing. Uh, so blossom end rot is when at the very bottom of your tomato, it gets squishy brown and looks a little like it's smushed, um, and it starts to rot. So blossom end rot. Now, the two common uh, reasons that you have blossom end rot is because you either have uh, inconsistent watering, which, let's face it, Mother Nature will decide when it's going to rain. So you don't really have a choice in that part of it. But uh, if you are watering your garden, you do want to have a consistent watering schedule. Uh, you don't want to overwater because that will cause some cracking and also some of the uh, blossom end rot issues. But then the other thing is calcium deficiency. That is a very common cause of calcium deficiency. Um, another way to see if your soil is, natu is naturally find out if your soil is calcium deficient, plant radish. Uh, if you plant radish and they grow super spindly and they don't actually form a bulb, oftentimes that means you have a calcium deficiency. Now, how do you fix a calcium deficiency in your garden? Well, the one of many ways to fix a calcium deficiency in your soil is to add organic matter uh, in the form of eggshells, compost. Uh, we already have a video about creating your own kitchen composter, right? We did that a couple months ago and it was super easy to make your own kitchen composter. You can even save some of your eggshells in a separate place um, to add to certain areas in your garden where you might have a calcium deficiency, especially if you're growing things like tomatoes. Um, the other thing you can do if you don't have a massive amount of eggshells is oyster shell. Yes, <laughs> Crystal, you beat me to it. Or same, same. Uh, oyster shell. We sell oyster shell at Mary's Heirloom Seeds. It is very easy to use. But it's important to nourish your soil before you have the problem. Um, if you... If you have issues with blossom end rot in the middle of growing your tomatoes, chances are they may not come back. They most likely will not. In my experience, they don't always bounce back. So it is important to fix the issues before you have them. So if you are planting heavy feeders, um, Dawn says, I freeze dry organic milk grocery store is about to throw out. That's a great option. Um, I So we don't drink milk here. Uh, but, yep, Crystal says milk. We don't drink milk here, but I do use heavy whipping cream in my coffee. Uh, Stacy says, I love the radish test. Lots of weeds will tell you that your soil needs it too. Absolutely. If you, if you pay attention to your plants, if you pay attention to your garden, there's a lot of things that it's going to show you that you may be deficient in. Um, so, like I was saying, we don't drink milk, uh, but we do consume some drinks. And heavy whipping cream is something I use in my coffee. So when I'm done with that carton of heavy whipping cream, I add water to it, I shake it up, so I get any of the remnants of the milk, and then I'll add it to my garden wherever it might need it. Um, you don't necessarily wanna use whole milk, or not whole milk, but you don't wanna use regular milk. 
um, you want to dilute your milk in order to use it in your garden. You don't really want a full strength. Um, so what's the next on my list? By the way, if you're just joining me, please feel free to like and share and subscribe and do all that fun stuff. Um, at marysheirloomseeds.com, we are having a giant announcement coming up on the 20th. So you definitely want to get in, get on, get in on that. Um, so blossom and rot was the first one. Uh, yellowing leaves. For those of you especially growing tomatoes, uh, eggplant, squash, uh, peppers, a lot of these are heavy feeders. Um, yellowing of your leaves oftentimes is a nitrogen deficiency. So you're going to want to make sure, again, that you improve the health of your soil before you start planting or in the middle of planting. There's a lot of things you can add. Um, we just added the nitrogen boost fish food to our um, back onto our website. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can get nitrogen into your soil. Uh, compost is a really big, really easy one. Like I mentioned, one of our previous videos is how to make your own uh, uh, kitchen composter. And then you can just use that stuff. Hey, Jesse, welcome. Uh, poor fruit setting. So that is a whole nother ball game. A lot of people have asked me, um, I have flowers, but no fruit. Um, so if you have lots of flowers and no fruit, there's oftentimes a couple things that that could be. Number one, it could be too much nitrogen. I just mentioned nitrogen before. So there's a, a little balance there. Too much nitrogen will give you amazingly green, beautiful growth and not a lot of fruit setting. Not enough nitrogen will give you a little yellowing of your leaves and not so happy plants, right? Um, so too much nitrogen in your soil is one of several causes of poor fruit setting. Um, Stacy says compost tea, absolutely. Uh, we, we showed you how to use a worm bin. Um, and if you do have your own worms, you can actually make your own um, worm castings tea, which is really good. Uh, the ladies over at KNC Worm Farm have some videos on how to do it yourself, or you can buy it from them. Um, I, I'm not an affiliate of KNC Worm Farm. They're just some awesome ladies and they've got some great information on their Facebook page. Um, so check them out. They do have a website and you can buy like satchels of, of worm castings and then you can use that to make your own tea. Uh, on my YouTube channel also, I've got a video on how to use horse manure, um, how to use goat manure. And part of that, sorry, I'm losing you here. There you go. Part of that is you can use a, a muslin bag. Uh, it's just a cotton bag and you can put some of your manure in there and use that to make an awesome tea. Sorry about that. I got a, I got Jojo running around here. Um, so those are some, some things you can do. Uh, Off Kilter says, I'm trying to convince Hannah to raise worms. No go as of yet. <laughs> well, the ladies over at KNC Worm Farm have done amazing uh, work with worms. Um, they've set up this great education and business that you can check out some of their information. Um, so those are some really simple, easy uh, solutions that we discussed on how to identify some plant health issues, um, which start in the soil oftentimes. Um, if you are also setting poor fruit or no, no fruit at all, sometimes it can be a pollination issue, which is why we suggest, um, hey, Hidden Harvest, welcome. Uh, that's why we suggest that you plant for pollinators. In January, we did a whole uh, campaign trying to encourage people to grow with pollinators. Uh, so plants for the bees. If you look behind me here, We've got some fresh calendula I just harvested from my garden today. It is beautiful. And this has been this has been being produced in the garden. It's probably a fourth generation uh, from seeds that have just fallen on the ground and continue to grow. So we're really excited about that. Uh, these over here, pink Swiss chard, my favorite. So part of what we discussed last week was easy stuff to grow. Uh, we had some customers that said, I don't know what to do. And that's one of those things that uh, Swiss chard is a really easy one. Uh, you asked about sun chokes. Uh, on occasion, we have sun chokes. It absolutely depends on when we harvest. Uh, it's 
sunchokes are usually harvested and then you've got to do something with them right away. They don't last on the shelf. They will rot. They will wither up and shrivel up and get funky. Um, so definitely something to um, uh, hidden harvest. Send me an email. Uh, my email is mary at maryshairloomseeds.com and I will see if I have any sunchokes available to dig up. Um, so let's get into soil. We already went through the soil, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Crystal says, can't wait to try my Swiss chard. Uh, so let's get into our recipes. So last week we talked about uh, cayenne, ginger, neem oil. Uh, so a couple things I've got in front of me. I've got cayenne flakes. Uh, you can use cayenne powder as well. This is just what I have laying around. We have homegrown garlic. We have some cinnamon here. Hey, Barbara, welcome. Um, and then last but certainly not least is Castile soap. Uh, this is in a liquid form, really, really easy to use. Um, I know there's a lot of recipes out there that use some commercial um, liquid soap. I prefer an organic option because everything we do here on our homestead um, in the garden is what we consider beyond organic. So there are pesticides and herbicides that you can use uh, that are certified organic um, or are acceptably used in certified organic gardening. While our garden is not certified organic, we do prefer to grow what we consider beyond organic. So let's start with cinnamon. I love cinnamon. Uh, I use cinnamon in my, in my coffee and all sorts of good stuff. Um, you, adding cinnamon to stuff is just delicious. Um, so cinnamon is used for damping off um, and as a natural rooting hormone. Um, anybody know what dampening off is or damping off? I keep calling it dampening off and I know it's damping off. Um, damping off is a soil born fungal disease. Um, so it usually affects seeds and seedlings when you are growing. Hmm. Yum. Uh, so. There are several different types of fungus that can cause damping off. Um, Yolene says my Swiss chard was growing nicely and then got stringy and died. Uh, I'm guessing you're referring to growing inside. Uh, let's see. Swarmstead says cinnamon for the Winneman. <laughs> uh, Yolene Smith says uh, your Swiss chard got stringy and died. I'm guessing you're talking about a small seedling. If you are growing indoors, it is really important to have your seedlings very close to the light. We're talking two inches, three inches at most, um, and you want to fan on them uh, because you want to give them strength. If you don't have a fan on your seedlings, oftentimes, uh, hey, to Family Homestead, welcome. Let me just see if I can do this here. There we go. We got another moderator here with us tonight. All right. So... Um, if you have stringy seedlings, I call them uh, leggy seedlings, uh, chances are it's because they are too far away from the light. Yep, it's Thursday. <laughs> um, or it's because they don't have uh, airflow to get them stronger. So try it again if you get a chance. Uh, I, I don't give up on, on um, Swiss chard. It's one of the easiest things to grow. Um, let's see. Yes, it is Thursday. Happens here a lot due to drastic temperature cha changes. Let's fungus go crazy. Ooh, goodness. Yeah, that is one of the issues that, that you have when you have temperature changes and fluctuations, humidity, dryness. Everybody has a different growing area, so it's really important. Let's see. Yolene says growing in the Caribbean. Uh, no need for indoor planting. Correct. Yep. So if you're growing indoors, you're definitely going to need to provide a little more than if you were just to plant them in outside. Um, I try to plant as much as I can directly into the garden. Uh, you reduce your shock in transplanting, um, and then they're a little more adapted to your environment. You don't have to do the um, hardening off. That is something for a whole nother video. <laughs> Let's get back on track and talk about damping off. If you've got questions about seed starting, uh, I will share in the uh, description section of this video. We have lots of information on our website. Um, if you go to marysheirloomseeds.com and you check out 
You can use the search option and use comprehensive planting guide. Just searching comprehensive will give you the same, uh, same pop-ups for our comprehensive planting guide. In that guide, you will find a ton of free information to help you grow from seed. There's a lot of information about seed starting, about uh, transplanting, uh, region-specific planting guides, zone-specific planting guides, so much information. Uh, thank you very much for sharing that as well. Now, Barbara says, how does cinnamon work for damping off? Sorry, I got totally sidetracked talking about seed starting. So because damping off is a fungal disease um, in your soil, and it's usually you see it right on the top, and normally what happens is that seedling that's growing, that base of the seedling starts to just shrivel up and get squishy and die because the fungus is affecting it. Now, cinnamon is a natural antibacterial. Yay, natural for the win. Um, it is often used as a rooting hormone as well. As a bonus, lots of us have it in our kitchen. Um, so what you're gonna do um, with seedlings in particular, you're gonna take your seedling that's growing, you can even put it on your bare soil after you plant your seeds and you're just gonna gently sprinkle the cinnamon on top of the soil to help uh, reduce your risk of soil borne fungus growing. Um, sometimes people have set, seen they have gnats or other types of fungus growing that maybe doesn't cause damping off, but it causes other issues in your plants. Um, so cinnamon is awesome. Um, I buy this by the pound, one, because we use it often, and then plus we can use it in our garden as well. Um, so if you have issues with damping off, cinnamon is my number one kick. Uh, Catherine in Little Bits of Heaven Homestead also uses that trick for hers as well. The other way that you can reduce your risk of damping off is instead of watering the top of your plant, water the bottom of your plants. So oftentimes your seedlings are in a tray. Now, last week, hey there from Michigan. Last week, in my background in my video, I had a tray of some amazing giant squash that were growing. Um, and in that tray had these little, little things. Uh, Barbara says, awesome and easy. You're very welcome, thank you. Uh, so these trays, usually you're gonna put them in a larger tray and you wanna water the bottom of the tray instead of watering the top. So by watering the bottom, you are again reducing your risk of bacteria growth on the top. Super easy. Uh, you don't have to buy anything expensive to save yourself a little bit of, of grief. Now, let's talk about insecticidal soap. Uh, we make a recipe. Uh, one of our customers sent me a private message on Facebook and he said, so you don't use any sprays? And okay bacterial or fungal? That's a very good question. Uh, damping off is a soil-borne fungal disease, um, but cinnamon works for both. Um, now, insecticidal soap spray. He said, you don't use any sprays? And I said, well, we, we use our own recipes, but there, there isn't any store-bought insecticide spray or herbicide spray that we use. S super easy. <laughs> Lucy's coming in here and she's uh, got one of her toys in her mouth. Sorry, totally distracted. Anyway, so what do we use in our recipe? Uh, number one is I, oh yeah, <laughs> make sure you give us a thumbs up. Uh, yep, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, so what do we use in our recipe? Um, we use, I have it written down just so that I didn't mess it up here. We use, one tablespoon of organic liquid castile soap. Again, this is something we use in our home anyway. So it's not something you have to go out and buy specifically for my garden. Um, and then we add to a giant jug of water, not one of these itty bitty glass jars. I use one of the larger, I have a bunch of jars. Um, I use one of the larger jars. You can mix it up by the gallon if you really want to. I don't mix it up by the gallon because I don't use that much at one time. Um, now, you can chop, grind, or liquefy a clove of garlic. Um, optional, you can use onion as well. And then you're going to add a teaspoon of either powdered or flaked cayenne. Now you're gonna add 
Look, we have a special guest tonight. Do you see that? That's Lucy. She never comes out, but of course today she likes Swiss chard. Oh my goodness. I might have to get her down or she's going to knock down the Swiss chard. Hi everybody. Lucy's making a special, a spe special appearance. Anyway, so you're going to mix all that stuff in a giant you can put it in a blender, which is the easiest. And then from there, you're going to put everything, uh, strain it through a cheesecloth. So, sorry, I'm about to lose some of my stuff back here. If she eats that, she'll barf. <laughs> Go on. Please, you can come back later. You can't eat that. Sorry, totally distracted here. She can't eat this or it'll make her sick. No, you can't eat it. You can't eat that either. Go on. I know. Cats, whatever. <laughs> We've got two awesome crazy cats. And if she eats that, she's got a sensitive stomach. Cats can, <laughs> she says, real life, no worries. Um, we actually grow some stuff for our cats. So they are spoiled, dirty, rotten. Um, we grow cat grass. We go grow catnip. Um, yes, I'm sorry, Crystal. I got totally distracted. Um, okay, so I'm going to recap because I got distracted and I'm sure you missed some of that too. All right, one tablespoon of organic liquid Castile soap, uh, one clove of garlic, uh, one teaspoon of powdered cayenne, or you can use the flakes of cayenne. Now you're going to set all this up in a big jug, probably a gallon would be the best, and let it stew, steep for an hour, one hour. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna strain all of that out so you don't have any chunks. Um, in, if you don't wanna steep it, you can actually put it all in a blender if that makes it easier. Um, totally up to you. You're gonna let it steep for an hour and then you're gonna strain off that extras. Obviously, if you're gonna be using a spray bottle, you don't want chunks of garlic and chunks of cayenne clogging up your spray bottle. Um, so you're gonna, you're going to, <laughs> sorry, I get distracted. Uh, you're gonna strain all that off and then you're gonna use it. Now, one really important thing. Uh, if you're gonna use this, um, you're gonna wanna use this in a time that is not hot uh, and not in direct sunlight right away. You can use this uh, for both insects and other things. This is really good for white fly um, and it's also really good for aphids. Uh, somebody asked me about an aphid infestation, and this is awesome. If you do end up with aphids in your garden, uh, a good blast of the hose usually will take care of it right away. But if you get to a point where it's a little bit overwhelming, this insecticidal soap is fantastic. Um, now, one thing to notice is be careful where you use any of these recipes because some of them will... Um, some of them will actually uh, harm beneficial bugs and the, not so, and the not so good bugs. So something to consider. Now, after I'm done with this video, I will post these recipes in the description section. You don't have to remember this or write it all down. It's all available on our website. Uh, Sherry posted a link to our website. Um, please put your questions in all caps. Yeah, then I can see it. <laughs> Uh, Sherry posted our website at Two Fine Homestead. So if you check out our website, go to marysheirloomseeds.com, check out our comprehensive planting guide, scroll down to the middle, kind of closer to the bottom, and you will find an entire section just for organic pest control. So all this information is available on our website and it's free. <laughs> all right, so what is next? Nematode control. Uh, sometimes people will use marigolds and they'll chop it up in the soil or they'll grow the nema they'll grow the marigolds and the roots actually exude a uh, chemical that can deter the nematodes. But I have another option for you. Haas over at Off Kilter Homestead had asked me about molasses. Uh, now, sometimes you can use molasses to help build beneficial microbes in your soil, and it can produce some amazing results in your garden. Um, but right now, we're going to talk about nematode control. So if you've got uh, the, did you know that there's actually bad nematodes 
and good nematodes, and there's a difference. Um, you can actually purchase good nematodes to fight the bad nematodes in your garden. But today we're going to talk about what you can do using stuff in your own kitchen, or if maybe you got to go to the grocery store or the, the local store and pick up a few things. Um, so for this, we have organic molasses and water. Super, super easy. Now, nematodes are tiny parasitic worms. They live in your soil. Uh, you will see if you were to pull up a tomato plant, for example, and you've got a bunch of chunky stuff all in it, um, usually they are um, root knot nematodes. You'll see big knots in your nematodes. Uh, let's see, predatory mites are very beneficial type of nematode, I think. I was just using your comprehensive planting guide this morning. I like to hear that. Um, I use it all the time. Customers are constantly asking me questions. Every day we respond to emails uh, on what do I do? How do I plant? What do I do from here? Um, and that's a great one. Uh, Spartacus says, hey from Oklahoma. Hey from Ramona. <laughs> uh, so uh, if you ever grow tomatoes and you find that the leaves are beginning to yellow and fall off the plant. Uh, one of... Oh, awesome. Thank you very much for sharing. Uh, we do have a Facebook page. Um, we have a website. If you're looking for awesome seeds, it's maryshairloomseeds.com. Uh, like the video, share the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, so let's get back to the nematodes. This mixture, when used on your in your plants or in your garden, um, can help with a lot of good stuff. Um, so here's the ingredients. We have three tablespoons of organic molasses and four cups of water. You're going to mix, mix, excuse me, mix the molasses and water in a spray bottle and shake it vigorously. Use warm water. If you've ever tried to put cold water and honey or molasses, it doesn't work very well. Uh, so you definitely want to use warm water. You can use warmer than you know room temperature, maybe not quite hot water, but definitely something that's going to be a little warmer. Sorry, let me get to see you here. Um, and you can use this. It's a molasses tea. It's really easy. Uh, you can use this on it with a spray bottle. Um, you can put it in your soil and it works pretty good. Uh, just got a seed order from you after a mail delivered to the wrong spot. Oh man, I'm so glad you got your seed order. <laughs> that happens. The post office is a little overwhelmed at the moment, but at least we try to get it to the right address, right? Um, so that is one of several options you can do in your own home uh, for nematode control. Now, last but certainly not least, uh, before I get to the last one, I just want to let you know, uh, after the video, if you go to our website, marysheirloomseed.com, scroll down to the bottom where it says newsletter, enter your email and subscribe. Uh, we have a huge announcement to make on the 20th. That is the official first day of spring. And can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> spring is amazing time. It's a great time for growing. I love it. Uh, and so we've got something super excited planned. It's also our 10 year anniversary here at Mary's Heirloom Seeds. Uh, the official 10 years is May. Uh, we're gonna celebrate a little early. So March 20th, mark your calendars, you got a day and a half left until we go um, with our big announcement. Thank you very much, Spartacus. It's We are very excited to be uh, 10 years of Mary's Heirloom Seed. So, and over all these years, we have so many uh, articles and things that we have posted um, on our website and they're all free. All right, so let me answer that question really quick. Um, Sorry, I just got here, so don't know if this was covered. What is the best prevention or control of squash vine borers? Uh, we actually discussed that on our last video. Last week, we discussed squash vine borers. Um, I suggested a video from Little Bits of Heaven Homestead on YouTube. Uh, Catherine is an awesome uh, lady, fantastic homesteader, and she's got a great option on... Um, squash vine borers. Uh, one of the things that we use is prevention. So companion planting to hopefully deter squash bugs. Um, one thing that people do is uh, BT, 
Uh, some people use BT, some people don't for munching insects. Um, but now I'm going to get to neem oil, which is another option for munching insects, like squash vine borers. Um, so neem oil is, you can use it on vegetables and fruit. It is absolutely safe to use on edible plants. Um, you just want to make sure, of course, you wash it. Uh, a lot of the produce we bring in, we wash it first before we eat it. Um, I admit, when I'm outside and I just like munch on some fresh beans or something, I give it a good spray with a hose and just eat it. Whatever, a little dirt isn't gonna hurt me. Um, so neem oil, let's get to neem oil. Uh, neem oil is cold pressed, well, okay. The neem oil that we carry at Mary's Heirloom Seeds is cold pressed from the neem seed. Uh, we did mention a last video last week um, about neem meal that can actually be used inside the soil. I don't use it. Um, I, it's not that I recommend it or don't recommend it. I'm just saying it's an option. Um, but neem oil is something that I have used. Um, so again, we have our Castile soap. Super easy. It's organic. It's liquid. Um, so you're going to use one teaspoon of Castile soap. You're going to use a half of an ounce of organic neem oil and you're going to use two quarts of warm water. Now you're going to mix this up very well in a jar, in a bucket, uh, whatever works for you, and you're going to use this to spray on your plants. Now the way neem oil works is when the munching insects chew on the plant, um, it will kill them. Um, Yes, and I will have in the description section of this video, I will have all of this information linked. So you don't have to write it down or remember it. It's all available for free on our website. Um, so this neem oil recipe, like I said, mix it into a jug, pour it in a spray bottle. You're gonna wanna use it within 24 hours because light degrades neem oil. So when we sell our neem oil, it comes in an amber bottle. But you notice I don't have it on my table here because we keep it in a dark box. Uh, we bag it up and put it out there. Um, peppermint soap or any scent. Um, so I am fond of peppermint Castile soap. So that's what I buy. Uh, you can buy the regular um, if you've got sensitive skin, uh, you can buy the stuff that doesn't have any scent at all. Um, I just I just like peppermint, so I use it. Um, and that's one of the things that some things don't like really strong scents. Um, and sometimes plants don't do well with peppermint. So just be aware, depending on what you're using it on. Um, I have not had any problems using peppermint Castile soap. It's not a lot that you're using. It's not like you're using jugs of it. You're using um, a teaspoon at a time. So it's not going to really be that big of a deal. Um, so this like I said, we'll use on munching insects. This won't harm, or at least it shouldn't harm. Um, I've heard the lavender is a favorite scent to use. That's a really good one as well. I do like lavender. Um, I, I like the peppermint best. So whatever works for you totally works. Um, but it, if you use the lavender, again, it's not going to harm your plants if you use the regular versus lavender. Um, so this is the last recipe that I do use on my plants. It's a homemade pesticide that does work. Um, it will work on contact in some cases because just simply the soapy water um, can harm the not so great bugs. Um, I don't blanket spray anything. So something to keep in, in mind with all of these different homemade recipes I'm using, we use everything in moderation. Um, we try to use natural options again companion planting first and foremost, and then we move on to the stronger stuff if we have to, and that is our homemade recipes. So those are some things you can do. So before I go, before I end for the evening and go clean out the chicken coop, um, I did wanna finish off with a little bit of information for you. Um, on our website at marysheirloomseeds.com, we have a page titled Grow Your Own Food. Um, in that page, there's a little sign up form, a little survey form. You can fill it out and you can ask questions. And I use these questions for some of our articles, uh, for some of our emails, as well as our live videos. So if you want your questions answered, I would be happy to answer them for you if you check out our website. 
Um, now, a couple other things you can do. Um, I mentioned earlier, uh, James says Cherokee purple seed, uh, seeds germinating and doing great. Awesome. Uh, Cherokee purple tomatoes are my favorite. So awesome on the germination. Now on our website, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, we have a newsletter option. We have a giant, massive, huge uh, newsletter going out on the 20th for our 10 year anniversary and to celebrate spring. Um, so if you've got any questions, you can also send an email to Mary at Mary's heirloom seeds.com. I hope that you enjoyed our live video today. I hope you had lots of information, um, a lots of your questions answered. Um, I will be here live once again next Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern for those of you on the East Coast. Um, and I will be sharing more helpful information. Uh, so be sure to uh, subscribe to our channel and you'll see it. Um, we've got some awesome stuff. If you want some of the most awesome Swiss chard, I highly recommend Flamingo Pink Swiss chard. Isn't that beautiful? It's amazing. <laughs> uh, repellent potential of Epizote. I am not sure. I think I pronounced that right. Um, I'll definitely have to check it out and I will answer that question for you um, in the comments after I am done. Thank you everybody for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we will try to share some more helpful information uh, as the weeks and months go by. Uh, I am Mary and I am signing off and uh, happy planting everybody.